Hi guys! Today we are going to make a homopolar motor. This is a very simple activity, but really interesting to watch. Kids will have lots of fun playing with this motor. However, this is an especially great activity for high school students to learn from about physics and electromagnetism. Allow me to first explain how to build this motor and then we'll dive right into the physics behind it later on. Starting off with the materials, you will need a AA battery, copper wire, the thicker the wire, the better, as I have seen that the motor doesn't really work with a thin one, a plier to shape the wire, and a few rare earth magnets. To make the homopolar motor, first off, attach the earth magnets to the negative end of the battery, then cut the copper wire to the desired length. I used 25 centimeters. From there, we are going to use pl the pliers to shape the wire into a rectangle like this one. Note that the wire always has to be touching the positive end of the battery and it has to encircle fairly close to the magnets at the bottom. That is why I am bending the middle of the wire here as it will touch the top. You might still need to continue to adjust the shape of the wire in order for it to properly move around the battery. You don't always get the perfect shape in the first try, and this is the trickiest part. A symmetrical shape is one that works the best. And these two ends of the wire need to be curved to encircle the magnets. And that's it! Explore your creativity by making different shapes out of the wire, like a dancing person or spiral. So now onto the science behind how the motor works. Um, the force that is making the wire spin is called a Lorentz force. The Lorentz force acts in the presence of an electric field and magnetic field. So over here, there's a current flowing through the wire and there's a magnetic field from the magnets. The Lorentz force also states that when there is a current flowing perpendicular to a magnetic field at a given point, another force results. This force is then both perpendicular to the current and magnetic field. We use a rule called the right hand rule to represent these forces. Over here, the current and magnetic field are perpendicular, which results in another force that causes the wire to spin rotationally. Sadly, this motor isn't enough to power machines. However, it is a great way to demonstrate how electromagnetism works. This is a really fun activity to watch once you get the wire to spin, and I can never get bored of it. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. Bye!